Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at what it takes to actually draw the contents of an array as a graph in Java. So we've been using the idea of using a swing to draw with Java for the last little bit. So we're going to take a look at the steps to actually take to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the idea of drawing a graph right now. So drawing a bar graph in Java, we have a couple of different options. So we're going to start off with one of the easier ways of doing that with the idea of drawing a bar graph. We use the left-oriented graph right here so we can actually organize our data for that. And so what it assumes is we have some array or array list with some contents in it. We're going to use the idea of the contents of that array of size of either int or double or some actual concept of numeric rating. We can actually use that to show the data on that. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to use that left array right here, uh, left alignment right there, so we can actually arrange it. And so what we need to do is we need to do some stuff with this. So we're going to create a panel object in Java. It's going to extend J panel. And in that panel, it's going to have some component pieces. It's going to need to have the method paint component and that, that lovely overriding method we're going to be using already. It needs to have that so we can actually use it. And what it needs to do is it needs to draw the contents of that array that we have up here as a bar graph on the screen. And so to actually do that, we want to take a look at a couple things. The first we want to make sure we look at is we want to make sure we know how big this screen is. So it went right here, and then we have it on that, because we're using swing on that, we have the lovely method. <coughs> get height. And our get height method will allow us to actually get track of how the height of this panel as well as the width of the panel. So we can actually use that information to draw what we want to put on the screen. Now, we have a couple different ways of actually organizing that information. One of the ways I'd recommend to actually do this so we can see the best possible distribution of information is we want to make sure that we evenly distribute the height of that graph among the parts of our actual data structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, um, that get height method and divide it by either our array or our array list length or size. So my array, my data, not length. And so that value right here, this get height over my data length, is going to give us the ability to have a certain height that we have for every single component we're going to draw. And so we'll store that as a variable. Of int height. As so the int height variable having that concept right here of the get height of the panel divided by the number of items inside our array, whether it's dot length or dot list, it's going to be a dot size. When we store that as our height, we have now a constant value we can use so we can evenly distribute our graph across the size of this. So all of them have the same exact amount of height to it. Now if we're going to orient our graph so it's going from the top or bottom for its up base, we'd obviously have to change that so it's going over the width of that piece and divide it by the contents as well. So we have our height that we need to know. Now we're also going to be doing this, we're going to use the drawing a rectangle, so in addition to height we have to know our x and our y as well as the width for this. So we have our x position, our y position, and our width. And those are all variables we're going to use to actually construct these rectangles. And so since our x right here is going to be constantly on that far left edge, aka it's the zero, we're not going anywhere on the x dimension, we'll set our x as a constant value of zero for that. So our x for all of our different rectangles will have a value of zero. Our y position right here, where is our y? What's going to be our top left corner because that's what we start drawing with up here. We're going to have that be as a function based on the height itself times the index of our data structure. And so if we have in our data structure, whether it's an array or array list, position 0, 0 times anything is 0, so we get our immediate x at our y point at 0. Our y of our second spot would be at height of two, 1. So that height, so we automatically have it at that one spot, and then double for second, etc., 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 all the way down until we have our n minus 1, which gives us the n minus 1 of that height. So we have that automatically distributed all the way across that. So we have our y value calculated right here as a function of height times index. And so we use that of our loop that we're actually going to be uh, going for that, and it's also an index of the actual data structure. So now we're going to be able to put that in there. Our width, however, is going to be a different thing. Our width is going to be the uh, value that we have stored inside that data structure at that index. So the data structure, in this case my data, sub index. And now, because of this, you can obviously see that we're going to be using a loop data structure right here. Since we have the idea that this is width is equal to my data sub index, and index is something that we would want to iterate over to actually draw all these components in as we put it on the actual uh, graph. So we have the idea that these components right here are going to be decided and assigned inside a loop. So we're going to loop over our data structure, in this case my data, 
and assign each of the values to it right here, and we'll use that value so we automatically draw them right here. Now, to make sure we can see this graph very easily, we have a couple options. We've been using the idea of using random colors, and we've been using that for all, uh, for all of our, our drawing projects for about a year. We can continue that, or we could have it set so we can actually use it for a range of colors. We could say that we want to have, oh, these are all going to be different shades of blue, so we can have the blue start at a certain range and have it go all the way down through that. So we can make sure that our colors fit within a certain pattern of color. Or we can have it start so that the red has a certain factor, the green, blah, 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 as we go down. So we can make it be a rainbow if we really wanted to. All sorts of ways we can make this happen. We're going to start off with the random though so we can actually see that happen. Once we have these data pieces right here of our height, x, y, and width, when we create a rectangle object, we then will then assign to a list. We assign that rectangle to a list, and then our paint component method that we've already used for our red your graphics project can actually then draw every re rectangle, excuse me, in that list inside this panel because it knows where to draw it from this little big graph that we put inside the loop of the rectangle draw. So we'll use that iteration to go ahead and do that, and we'll put that together, and we have our draw rectangle approach, so it draws it all in right here. Again, if we want to change that so we can orient our graph in a different way, all we have to do is change these variables to match the appropriate direction. If I want to change it so I have my graph operating right from this direction, instead of having my height be right here of get height divided by my data, right, of data.length, so because my height is no longer constant, my height now is dependent on the actual content of my data structure. So my height is going to be my data sub index, on this case, minus the actual height of the thing. So it draws it right here. So this will make it a square that's that big, which means also that my y position will also be the height of the um, amount minus that spot. So I can say, oh, here's this spot, and it's going to be that tall. So here's my, it's this big, and it starts off that minus this. My width will be a constant now instead of having a constant right here. And so I have that width will be now be my get width divided by the number of items in my data structure. And the same approach would then happen for my x and my y. We'll go ahead and take a look at the own code and go from here. So we're inside our project right here. As you can see, I'm in my drawing project. And I have in my view package, I have my graph panel. As you can see, what we were talking about earlier, it extends the graph, the JPanel class. So I have some information. I've added to this a specific array called graph source. So I can actually have a data structure we can graph for this. And what we want to do is inside our lovely structure right here, we have the idea that we have in our constructor, I'm going to initialize my graph source like I normally would for initializing an array. Here I'm using a new interface square brackets to anonymously initialize this. And then passing to the contents of, in this case, 2, 4, 2, 13, 10, 20, 12, 75. I immediately start giving it some values that can go ahead and dump that together. I have my setup panel helper method we've used throughout my other projects. In this case, I'm just using it to set the background color of the panel to a light gray so I can actually see the difference of the color for this. And now what we want to do is we need to have our special method that we use for drawing inside Java, inside a panel, and that's our paint component method. Again, note that we should actually have right here the at override tag, identifying this as method is overridden. We then want to go ahead and as our first line of code, because it's overridden, we want to call our super method for this, so super.paintComponent. And we pass it our current graphics object, which is the one that is passed as part of its parameter. Now, because we're using this, we do have some imports we go along with that. In this case, we have java.awt.asterisk because we're getting access to all the AWT components on that. And then JPanel, because we're obviously inside of JPanel. Moving down now, how we have the idea of creating the graphics 2D version of the graphics. And so to do that, again, all I do is cast my current graphics parameter as a graphics 2D object. And I call it main graphics so I can keep track of what I'm using. And then we use a loop that we're going to go over the size of our data structure. In this case right here, just starting at index equals zero, index is less than graph source dot length, index plus plus. And using that data structure as our framework, I'm going to then create a variable for height, width, x position, y position, like we just talked about. And so we have right here that our height on this is equal to this dot get height divided by the graph source dot length. So I'm grabbing at the data structure on that, so the idea of the height of my data structure will be passing at the height of the array dot length, so that I have a constant height for all of my pieces. My width of my component. I've got it set to be graph source sub index divided by 200, so I have a nice amount right there. And actually, it's going to take that off. We don't want to do that. We just want to do this. And so we're going to actually change that right here because we use that for proportionality. And so we're going to say our width is now going to equal to our graph source sub index, so it retrieves the specific value. So that's a width of 4, 2, 213, 10, 20, etc. My x position, like I said, will always be a constant of 0. So we can actually go through and keep that like we just had on the board. And then my y position, like we said, is a function of the height times the index. So every time I loop through this, my index is updated appropriately. 
We then have our standard approach for grabbing a random color, including an alpha, so we have a different layer of transparency for that for each of those values. And then I set my color to be that new random color I just assigned to that. And I then draw a new rectangle based on these parameters right here with this, <coughs> with this color information right here. And we have that saved. That's the end of my for loop right here in my paint component method as well. And so what I've done is I've added this graph panel object inside my drawing panel. And I've loaded that in there. So if I go take a look at my design window, that I have my graph panel, it exists. I scroll over inside my screen right here and here's my graph panel with the contents of it being shown up automatically because Eclipse window builder shows it for us. I go ahead and play this. And as you can see right here, I have my two and four. And because those are basically just double, you can see that right here, that tiny little line of two, the slightly bigger line of four. And then I have my 214, which is drastically bigger than the rest of it. And the same basic approach. Now, if I go ahead and change that data inside my array, you can see how that will have a different impact. So let's do that right now. Let's go to the data structure itself, go to the graph panel, and we'll add it to this now inside my lovely array. I'm gonna change this to, say, 120. Clearly a different value, and then keep that at four. 10, 20, we'll change the 20 though instead to this, so you do a nice, say, 407. And the 75, our last one will be 705. 705, sure, why not? So we have some values attached to all of that for how big it's gonna be. We now change that value for the structure. And let's even take out the 10, and we'll see how it resizes the size of the graph based on that. So save that, play again. As you can see, the graph itself now has different contents. The graph itself now matches. Because I rem uh, took out one of those structures, we have a different idea of what's inside that. And so that four right there is still really, really small comparatively to these other much larger values. That 705 value is so big that it goes past the size of everything else. And we can see by the change of color here that we have actually a much clearer definition of what's actually inside that. So I have that larger value, much smaller value, large, larger, smaller, and much larger value. And so the different values exist between this version right here, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, versus in this version, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the contents are based on the content actually of the data we're passing it. And again, so if I were to change that, to rotate it around the axis, so I would have that instead being on the right here of height, width, and position. Say for example, I have my Y position then be a zero. I change that to a zero right here. I have my X position then be a source of the width times the index. My width then is gonna be the get width divided by length. And my height will now be the, simply the graph source sub-index. So now I've changed that same uh, approach right here. My width and height are assigned. My X and Y position are also assigned. Save that and play this new version. And we now have a data structure right here. Let's get the color change a bit. It's the same data, same color, same structure as this one right here. But as we can see, it's organized now going on a vertical column with the top right there versus the left-hand column right here for this bar graph. The same contents, just organized a little bit visually differently. And all we had to do to change that was simply go to the code and change what we use as our base right here for our width and height and swap our X and Y for which one is appropriately attached to that. Instead of having X position as width and index, the Y position is height times index. Instead of having in height as graph source sub index, it's going to be the height divided by length. And the width is going to be graph source sub index. So simply just rotating those values around is all it takes to change the way we display that graph. And so that's how we can create a graph that represents the idea of our content using Java Swing graphics.